Hello, beautiful people of the internet. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Hey guys, I just want to come in and give a really quick disclaimer because I feel really fucking weird about uploading this video. This is in no way trying to be like a this is what my ex did to me kind of video. I'm not trying to talk down on him at all, even though I want like nothing to do with him. It's not supposed to be any type of like hateful video and I'm honestly not really trying to go into too much of my personal life, even though I did talk about some of my like history. I really didn't want this to be too much about like what the relationship was. I really just want to talk about like some of the things I was feeling just so that anyone who is feeling this way in their own relationship can know that they're not alone and that it's something that you can get out of and you're not crazy, you're not stupid, any of those things. Like many people go through these same experiences. Just a lot of people don't talk about it. So I want to talk about it, but please bear with me. I feel so, so, so weird about this. Like, I don't even know necessarily what feels weird about this. It's just like, I don't really feel like I need to go into too much detail about my history. Like, it's not anyone's business, but I don't know. This is something I wanted to do from the get-go. So, I was like, I'm just gonna do it anyways. Just don't be mean to me, please. <laughs> I'm fragile. Thank you. This is a really bittersweet video, and I really don't want it to be messy. I'm not making this to, like, call people out, but this is one of my more anticipated videos. I think just because I know a lot of people don't understand what happened with me and my ex. And the thing is I really don't owe an explanation to anyone. I know that it's like my business and my ex's business and like people don't have to get involved in it. But I'm not here to like share all these details. I'm kind of just here to share about the feelings that I went through because part of me just feels like if I had seen a video like this when I was in the relationship, maybe it would have sped up the process. I don't know. Everyone has to go through their own journey, but like, I feel like it would have helped to hear this earlier on. And there's not enough people who talk about stuff like this. I mean, there's been more of a trend lately of people talking about like healing from their breakup. Those like TikTok videos where people do like day one, day two, day three of healing from their breakup. But like, I feel like there's not a lot of people who really go into like what they were feeling because a lot of people don't really want to share the details. First of all, I have a lot of context for who I am and how it affected my relationship. So there's gonna be a lot of like personal past details that don't involve anything to do with my ex. If you really don't care about that, you can skip to this timestamp. However, I would really advise listening to the whole thing because the context is important to me at least. So first of all, I spent a lot of my childhood, a lot of my teenage years especially, with really, really bad anxiety. I actually had separation anxiety and panic disorder and social anxiety. A lot of things would really send me off the rails. Like I couldn't even go to the grocery store with my parents without having a panic attack. I would like throw up and pass out at so many events because I would get myself sick from my anxiety. And at first the separation anxiety was really bad with my mom, but then it kind of transferred over to my childhood best friend as we got older. I kind of always had like a favorite person, which might indicate something else going on, but I haven't been diagnosed with anything else so we're not gonna dive into that we're just gonna say separation anxiety <laughs> but anyways whoever my favorite person was at the time I would literally lose my mind over them like obsessed to a very extreme extent if they like talk to anyone else for too long I would like just crave their attention freak out you know a lot of good stuff I don't know what that was necessarily but a lot of that was like when I was younger I still get like hints of it but really it's not to that extent anymore outside of the mental disorders I just had a lot of like self-esteem issues. I almost always felt like I was left out of the crowd. I always felt like I was unimportant, that no one cared about me. I feel like you guys can understand where I'm going with this. I grew up with a very unhealthy relationship with myself and with a lot of people around me. I also had like no examples of a healthy, happy couple around me. And beyond that, I was also obsessed with the idea of having a boy. From the moment I hit people, I was like, I need a boy. I've read so many fan fiction, so much Wattpad, so much smut. Oh my gosh. To an extreme extent, I play all those like little life sims where you had to like choose your story, choose who you would date, all that. And I know like so many girls did this, but I did it so much that like I would cry myself to sleep 
so many nights, nearly every night because I was like, oh, I'm so lonely. I was fucking like 14. What do you mean you're lonely? And then fast forward into college. I graduated at 17 and I moved six hours away from home, which was pretty far away from my family as someone who has or had separation anxiety. All of my friends from high school stopped talking to me. The only friends that I had were online, meaning I had one friend online, so that didn't really help me to get out of my dorm ever. And on top of that, I was failing one of the classes that I needed to actually go on my degree path. And this specific degree is the only reason I went to A&M. So once I was on route to failing that course, I changed my degree. And there wasn't really a reason to be at that school anymore. So I was in like full crisis mode when I was going through all of this and I ended up with pretty bad depression on top of all of my anxiety. So I started antidepressants. And during all of this time period, there was one guy, one singular guy who had slid into my DMs and he probably only lasted, I don't know, maybe like three or four weeks max, I would say. He was my first kiss, but that's all I got before he ghosted me. So that's my one guy experience at this point. I ended up transferring schools after one semester back to Louisiana so that I could be closer to my parents. Everything was going a lot better. Uh, my Prozac was working. <laughs> I was closer to my family. I was happier. And I decided that I wanted to join dating apps on Valentine's Day, which was really fucking hilarious. And let me just say, those first few months of dating apps were, they were really interesting. I actually talked to a lot of people, like I had pretty solid like talking relationships with a few different guys, like we would have long ass conversations. I remember this one guy, he lived in Florida, I don't even know how I matched with him, but he lived in Florida and like I called him on the phone and we would just like talk and we probably did this like a couple times for like hours until like 2 a.m. Like, this this is a fever dream to me, but that's what the Prozac did. Like, I don't remember anything that really happened. Like, I just have vague memories of it. It feels like a dream. And for the one guy that I did try and go on a date with, I got stood up for. So, yeah, really fun experience. So, that semester ends. I get no action. I am bitchless. That summer, between freshman year and sophomore year of college, I went live with my uncles in Pennsylvania for like a month. And I decided I was sick and tired of being a fucking loser. I started drinking for the first time and I started convincing myself I wanted to be like all crazy with guys. Although I was constantly avoiding all the guys who were just trying to hook up because obviously. I ended up hanging out with one guy and we had a little bit of fun but no sex. But I was like, ooh. I gotta get on birth control because I'm about to be so crazy. <laughs> Still a virgin here also. I don't know what the fuck I was talking about. So like I said, this is all before the specific ex I'm talking about even shows up. This is my entire history with guys. Like that was literally everything that I had. I met he who shall not be named in November of 2019, a month after I had turned 19 myself. And I was still very broken, very desperate, wanted to be cool, wanted to like be like everyone else who was older or just more experienced, whatever. And I still had no idea what I wanted to do. Like I said, I was 19. My ex at the time was 23 and he had had his fair share of experience and he drank like he did cool things to me. My only real ambition at this point was to get a PhD in psychology so that I could go into clinical practice. And outside of school and what I was doing for my like whole life, mainly I was really into K-pop, dancing, and writing. I mostly wrote fan fiction at this point but I was doing pretty well on Tumblr. I know that sounds really dumb but like I was having fan fictions that had like 20k notes, which was pretty good at the time. When my ex came into the picture, there were just a lot of opinions being shared. I'm not going to discredit any of them, but when I do look back, even though I was insecure and didn't have that much of a personality, the few things that I did care about and that I did enjoy doing kind of all started disappearing once I had a partner. Let's just say that within the first three months, I had moved Ooh. into his place. I had fully deleted my Tumblr that I had been working on for the past five years. I decided I wasn't going to pursue a PhD anymore. And I wanted to drink so badly that I was convinced that I was fine to get off of antidepressants. And to be fair, I don't love antidepressants. Obviously, like, 
for other people, yes, but I never want to get on antidepressants again. But at the time, it was for survival. Like, if you need them to survive, then yeah, you need them. Like, I did need them at a certain point, and I think I still needed them then. It took me a while to get to the point where I was like, I don't need them. I don't need them now, but I did need them then. And here is probably one of the bigger lessons out of all of this. If you meet a guy and in like three months, you're convinced that he will take care of you through anything and that it's okay for you to come off your antidepressants, don't fucking do it. I didn't fucking know this guy. This was not something I should have subjected to him. And like, just point like I shouldn't have like trusted him enough, no matter how he handled it. I should have not been like, this guy is trustworthy for me to do this with when I literally just moved in with him. And I don't know if it's this bad for everyone, but my withdrawals were fucking insane. Like, I am not proud of who I was during that time. I quit cold turkey and my ex and I, we drank a lot. So, <laughs> med withdrawals and being drunk all the time, especially as someone who was just starting to drink, that was not a good combination. I mean, it wasn't long until we started fighting constantly. And when we would fight, the worst parts of us would come out. I had an anxious attachment style, he had an avoidant attachment style. and. You could probably put the pieces together that it just didn't work well. There were a lot of really bad situations. I think by the time I was out of the withdrawal period, which probably took about like six months, it was already too late for us. I straight up could barely tell you anything that happened within the first two years of our relationship because there was so much toxicity, so much codependency, plus the antidepressant withdrawals and just general disassociation. Like I had a lot going on. Point blank, we weren't healthy already at this point we were so unhealthy i had a lot of conversations with myself during this time i had a lot of like agreements with myself in my head on what i was gonna do moving forward i was severely unhappy i had friends cutting me off left and right because they would tell me to leave him and I couldn't do it. It wasn't that I didn't want to, it was that I could not. I felt so fucking stuck and sad and stupid. It was just like a pit of depression that I kept pulling myself back into every single time I wanted to leave him and then I couldn't. I kept just going more downhill and every time we attempted to end it, it would never work out. So during those first couple of years while we were dating, we did have a lot of conversations about what we were going to do when I graduated and we did have plans to move away. We didn't know where, but somewhere. And I made this Ooh. vow with myself that if <laughs> I was still this unhappy, or actually unhappy at all, that I wouldn't move with him. He would just go by himself. So time goes on, we get to the point where it's coming up on time to move. I'm still severely unhappy, and what do I do? I move with him. We moved to Wyoming, and things got so much worse when we moved. The fighting got more frequent more loud, more scary. I ended up convincing myself I was batshit crazy and that either I needed to go back to therapy or I needed to get on antidepressants or I needed to back off and be more empathetic, convince myself that I had either BPD or OCD or bipolar or schizophrenia or narcissism, whatever the fuck I could think of to make me feel like there was something that I can do because I must be the bad guy. And probably the biggest positive about moving across the country was that I found a really, really good job. The one that I'm still currently at. I love it so much. This job has brought out so many things in me that I didn't know that I had. I've made friends who genuinely give a fuck about me and are trying to help me through all of my shit. And I've also had people and experiences mostly that have helped me really gain my confidence and make me realize that I'm not shit at everything, I'm not a terrible person, that I'm actually, like, people like me and people think I'm, like, talented and good at stuff. Like, I didn't really ever feel that way. <laughs> so then, from this point on, things just started getting better for me. I was doing those, like, level 10 life wheels, if you've ever seen those before, where you rate, like, all areas of your life. It came to a point where I was rating so high on every different category of my life, like work, eight out of 10, confidence, nine out of 10, hobbies, nine out of 10, whatever, like 
every single thing I was like wow this is going really well for me but literally every single day I would come home and my relationship would fall short I would come home Ooh. expecting a fight expecting judgment expecting myself to not sleep expecting myself to not eat expecting myself to waste all my gas driving circles around the city because I just was sobbing all night and I was trying to get my mind off of it every day I kept hoping that maybe once in a while I would be pleasantly surprised when I got home expecting something bad and then it wasn't and that just like never happened it was actually an alternative sometimes I would come home like feeling like actually nothing went wrong today there's nothing that could possibly throw the vibes off somehow something would happen I don't know and in the last probably like six months maybe even like four months I don't know somewhere around that time frame of the relationship things happened like really quickly so in october of 2023 he broke up with me i begged him back we got back together and literally like a month after that we were looking into buying a house <laughs> we bought a house in december technically he bought a house he did not put my name on it but yeah we bought a house thinking that everything was going well because the month after we broke up was pretty good um the house made things infinitely worse again i got to enjoy the domesticated living in the house for about two months i think until i broke up with him at the end of february we ended up getting back together again over that weekend because i convinced myself that the problems were only our communication yeah after that breakup i started journaling because i was trying to be very very observant because for so long during the relationship i felt insane i felt like i could never remember how much we were fighting like he would bring up like oh we've been fighting this many days of the week and i'd be like were we like i could not keep track there was so much shit going on it was just like chaos so i was like i'm gonna look at how much we're fighting what we're fighting about how i'm feeling really because i wanted to see if when i would have good days if it was just like oddballs or if it was like consistent feelings and then like i don't know there are patterns because i also thought at some point that it was my period and that i pms so bad that i would start all these fights but anyways yeah i was journaling all of this to try and find patterns and looking back at the journal entries they're legitimately hysterical like i was delusional i was not okay and during that next month we were both on like our best behavior honestly but there was quite literally never a minute that i was happy or i felt like i was actually in love with him it was just like this super toxic tether it took me up to when i went to korea which was from april 1st to april 14th uh, to realize there was nothing I could do to salvage the relationship at all. I lost myself entirely. I mean, like, when I went to Korea, I was like, this is me. I feel like me. I haven't felt this way in so long. Like, two weeks away showed me who I can be. And so many people take that as, I just really like Korea and I want to be in Korea. Like, no, it was being away from the relationship. I could be myself. The second I came back from my trip, I ended it and I moved to Colorado instantly. <laughs> and this is where I am now. There are a lot of things I'm just not okay with saying online. I'm not here to put down my ex. I really like just don't, I don't want the drama and I just, I don't want to deal with him anymore. Like that's not my prerogative. I'm actually trying to never have to deal with him again this is like part of my closure it's not really in my character to bash others but like i said i just want other people who may be feeling any of these type of emotions and maybe if you're in like a similar situation just to like really think about some of the things that i'm saying and some of the things that you're feeling try to put some puzzle pieces together see if you're noticing patterns like if you're feeling constantly unhappy if you don't feel like yourself if you're not feeling heard if you're not feeling seen if you're not feeling loved if you're not feeling respected if you're not feeling anything like if it feels like anything but peace and happiness it is okay to leave like you don't need this crazy reason i have a lot more reasons but at the end of the day it just came down to i was not fucking happy and i had lost myself entirely and no one wants to feel like that everyone wants to go to finding themselves at the end of the day you'll always go back to trying to figure out who you were or who you are everyone's gonna go back to trying to find their happiness and if you're having trouble determining if your happiness is linked to the relationship or if it's just you leave anyways it'll hurt less i was so terrified of being alone and 
like leaving what I thought might be the best partner for me because at the time I didn't know but it really just came down to like I could either take the chance of being unhappy for life with the wrong person or I can risk like maybe at most a few years because I know sometimes people take a really long time to recover from a breakup so like what maybe I'm like sad for like two years after I break up but it would be shorter than a lifetime no matter what it would be shorter than a lifetime or maybe they're both a lifetime of unhappiness but one you at least took the risk to make yourself happier and the other one you stayed complacent I'm so fucking glad I didn't stay to marry or to have kids with this guy because I made so many other regretful decisions that I wish I never did and I think if I took it further than what I did it would have just been way too bad. I'm not necessarily regretful that anything happened the way it did because it got me to where I am now. I finally have a fucking backbone and some self-confidence and I can actually take some shit now after years of being an insecure shell of myself but I mean, I wish it didn't have to happen the way it did. And if you're in one of those relationships where you feel like you want to leave constantly, but you don't feel like you can, you'll get there eventually. I'm not sitting here being like, this is going to be your motivator and you're going to do it tomorrow. Like, no, it might still take you a few years, honestly. Like, every single year that it went on that I kept feeling that way and I didn't leave, I was like, what the fuck am I doing? And I just kept putting myself down more and more and more. Like, why can't I build up the fucking courage to do this? And I genuinely thought I was never going to and I did and yeah I'm here <laughs> I'm fucking here it kind of just hit me right now give myself a fucking pat on the back pretty awesome of me if you can manage it if you're unhappy just leave it works out I did it and I'm a million times happier for it so anyways you guys can ask questions and stuff I'm not sure that I'll answer all or any of them I don't know I'm trying to leave this chapter behind now especially because I feel like just this relationship shit is lingering over my head over every decision in my life that I'm currently trying to make but it's a big part of my life I'm not trying to pretend that it didn't happen or trying to erase it I just now want to close the chapter and move on thank you guys so much for watching if you did enjoy be sure to leave a like and a comment and if you're feeling generous you can even subscribe I'll see you guys all in the next one but if not bye bye